Hi again, Bernie Maloney from Powered by Teams with some tips on job search in these short videos. If you haven't already, I do recommend you go to this URL and download the PDF with all the notes that I'm going to be sharing here in these videos. Print it out, have it available so that you can take notes. This video is going to be about the side door and networking and building those skills. So let's go ahead and take a step into that. So um, as you're going through job search, networking is going to be your most powerful ally, which is why this is the first video that I recommend you watch. Now, um, something to keep in mind is there's instances where you can network. You want to start out, sure, with your contacts. When I was let go from HP, my entire network was inside of HP, and it was useless to me. So you may have to rebuild your network, and there's still plenty of places you can do that. Um, go to meetups. Meet people. Find the interesting ones. Make a connection with them. Meet them offline. It's even easier now than it was 15 years ago when I was in search because you don't have to physically go someplace. You can go to meetups everywhere and find a really great set of people. Another place that you can go and expand your network is conferences. There's probably one day conferences in your locale. Um, you may be thinking, Bernie, I'm in job search. I don't have cash flow. Don't worry. There are ways to get in. Here's a pro tip. Volunteer. Find the organizer and call up and ask if they're looking for volunteers. They probably are, and they'll probably let you in for free. You'll probably have to work about half the conference, but then the other half of the conference, you're going to be able to meet the people that are there. Now, here's a pro tip. If you're given a choice of where you're going to volunteer, ask to work the registration table because you're going to be meeting the people as they come in the door. You're going to be identifying the people that you want to network with throughout the rest of the conference. Okay, so as you're meeting people and you're having those interactions, uh, something I want you to keep in mind comes from Adam Grant's book, Givers versus Takers. And in a lot of networking, people are takers. What's in it for them? What do they need out of somebody else? And that dynamic is something that people don't like in networking. I want to turn you into a giver. I want to show you some tips that you can use to really make an impact when you are networking and really get people on your side wanting to help you. So um, the first thing is like when you meet people cold, um, I'm going to give you a series of questions you can use to really start to get them to engage. See, I can walk up to pretty much anybody at any event. And in fact, I usually try to find the scariest person there and start with them because the rest become easy. And what I do is I walk up and I say, hi, my name's Bernie. What are you working on? Um, what are you passionate about? Uh, where could you use some help? Wow, this sends people back because they're not used to somebody seeking to help them or asking about what they're interested in. This will really get them talking. And they're really going to be looking to tell you all about themselves. You're going to get some great ideas. And if you're seeking to help them, wow, they're ready to open up to you. Um, you may be thinking, wait, what do I have that I could help them with? You'd be surprised. See, even if you don't have anything else, you've got introductions. You've got connections in your own network. So even if your network isn't bearing fruit for you, it might bear fruit for somebody else and it might be perfect. So recognize you've always got things to trade when you're networking. As you're networking, when they turn the question to you, you want to have practiced an elevator pitch so that you can talk about what you're interested in in a way that really resonates with them. So you do want to have an elevator pitch. And there's a simple technique to do this. You can talk about whatever it is that you work on. But then you want to end it with, but what I really do is, and then talk about what the impact is that you can have on an organization. If you've been through one of my Agile classes, you've probably heard me say, you've seen me as a trainer, you may think of me as a coach, but what I really do is I help my clients make breakthroughs in performance with their teams, their organizations, and sometimes even themselves. And then you can follow up something like that with a question, do you know anybody who'd be interested in something like that? That's going to open their mind up to people that they could introduce you to, to increase your network. Now, when you are, uh, so some things that will help you get in touch with that impact. Let me start out with this. These are in the reference list that's at the bottom of the PDF. Simon Sinek's Start With Why video is a terrific video 
to start to get you to connect with the impact that you want to have. Something else that helped me while I was in search was his other video um, called If You Don't Understand People, You Don't Understand Business. And that's from an organization called 99U. Again, the link is going to be in the reference list. Another thing that helped me, well, that I found afterwards, actually, was his book, Find Your Why. You can get this in your library. It's got a great process for figuring out what your why is, what impact you want to have. And that really connects with people. Another reference that really helped me was a book by an author named Robinson called The Element, where he tells stories of people that may have had some early struggles in life, but they eventually found their passion. See, passion really connects with people. So those are some references that may help you. Now, as people connect with you, um, they're going to be willing to make introductions, and I want to help you make powerful asks for introductions. They may say, hey, Bernie, how can I help you? Now, the typical way that people ask for introductions is something like, uh, who do you know at a company like X? But I want to show you some ways to take it up a couple of notches. So I'm going to use Nike as my X as we go through these examples. And I want you to, ex to notice in your own head how the number of people, the situations, expands as I change the way that I ask this question. So who do you know at Nike? Okay. Now, here's another way, asking the same thing. Who do you know who knows someone at Nike? Do you feel it expand? Let's try it again. Who do you know who might know someone at Nike? Do you feel it expand even more? Wait, there's still one more level. Who do you know who might know someone in a position or at a company like Nike? See, it doesn't have to be at the company. It could be in the position type that you're seeking for. So keep that in mind. Expand out the number of referrals that people can give you. And when they say, yeah, I could introduce you to somebody like that, okay, um, one of the things that's really going to help you is offer to ghostwrite the interview and send it on to them. See, people want to help. I told you this in the intro, but they don't know how or they get busy. Okay, so if you ask them to write the intro, you may never get it. But if you say, hey, could I ghostwrite that intro to make it easy for you to edit and send, they'll probably say yes. Editing's a lot quicker than writing from scratch, especially if they've just met you. Even if they know you really well, they might not know how you want to be positioned. So help them. See, this is a big tip for job search. You want to make it easy to help. You want to make it easy for people to say yes when you ask for that help, when you ask for something like an introduction. So if you found some value in this video, I'd love to have you share it out. My contact information is right over there with the URL and the QR code. And in our next video, we're going to talk about going in the front door instead of the side door. What do you do with your resume and with interviews? So let's go take a look at that.